Take a guess on the maximum amount of wealth a person can amass in his or her lifetime. If you think it probably falls below $100 billion, then you're about to be mind blown. Welcome to Luxury Wire, where today we'll talk luxury as we are about to get a window into the life of the richest people that have ever existed. Even though a majority of them are long dead, we can still glimpse the extravagant lifestyle they had centuries ago despite the evolution of standards. Let's start off with William the Conqueror at number 10. One of the richest families in the world is frequently thought to be the English royal family. They are certainly not going to spend any time soon sleeping under a bridge thanks to their 88 billion bucks. But in contrast to their ancestor, their enormous riches is a little too little. In addition to becoming the first king of England at the age of 38, William the Conqueror amassed a quick fortune that today would be worth around $228 billion. He only received one third of them in taxes from Normandy's peasants, therefore they were either enormously wealthy peasants or were heavily taxed into poverty. Which is more likely, I'll let you decide. Naturally, the remainder of his wealth came from the British land that he conquered. Well, he's not dubbed as the Conqueror for nothing. Furthermore, barons in the area had to take an oath to the new king in exchange for keeping their lands and titles, and William determined that these taxes were far too tiny to be shared. With $228 billion on hand, he made the decision to start living below his means. Instead, he spent the most of it on infrastructure development. Over 100 buildings, including castles, fortresses, churches, and the famous White Tower, had been built by him before he died. They had elaborate tapestries all over them. Undubitably, his favorite color was gold, and at the time, it was simpler to make everything gold than paint it. And for that, William's kingdom appeared like an ocean of silver and gold. At number 9 is Osman Ali Khan. The fact that he was the richest Indian to ever live should speak volumes. People still reside in 27-story homes in the Asian nation today. But they fall far short of Osman Ali Khan, the previous king of Hyderabad. From 1911 until India conquered the nation in 1948, Ali Khan presided over the princely state. It's truly by some miracle that the nation maintained its independence for that long, especially considering that it had the only operating diamond mine in the world at the time and a ruler who was regarded as the richest man on earth, despite living in the same era as JP Morgan, Rockefeller, Rothschild, and other notable businessmen. The absolute minimum one might accomplish if in charge of a mint in a nation that served as the exclusive supplier of diamonds to the world market is to amass $230 billion. Well, the Nizam could have made more money if he hadn't used the revenues to improve his people's quality of life. Even though he provided his nation with electricity and transportation systems, the ruler still managed to amass a number of opulent possessions for himself, including $100 million worth of gold and silver, more than half a billion dollars worth of jewels, and one of the largest diamonds in the world, the Jacob Diamond, which is estimated to be worth $50 million. The Nazim sent Queen Elizabeth II diamond jewelry, a tiara, and a necklace for her wedding as a display of his wealth. This demonstrates that Ali Khan wasn't just the richest man in the world, he also displayed his wealth to those who had enslaved his nation just a few decades before at the grandest balls. At number 8 is Nicholas Romanov. Nobody in their right mind would claim to have invented communism, but even so, Nicholas Romanov, commonly known as the last Russian emperor, reigned with such incompetence that he managed to turn Russia into the cradle of the ideology that still looms over the rest of the globe. One would assume that a man like that couldn't be so wealthy. However, Nicholas did fairly well in terms of his fortune. One may clearly see some small societal inequalities when a man had $300 billion in his bank account, while his citizens ate literally grass and dirt. One could understandably wonder, how did this czar amass such tremendous wealth when his subjects were so impoverished? The United States, or more precisely Alaska, holds the key. In order to avoid losing it to the British, Romanov sold the oil-rich island to the United States. Of course, he had no idea the land was so resourceful when he sold it. But, oh well, it's not like he went crazy over… hold up, never mind. Of course, the Tsar and his family enjoyed a level of luxury that may even make today's billionaires envious. Only by visiting the magnificent palaces in St. Petersburg and Moscow can one truly understand the luxury they experienced. The Kremlin is one of these palaces and it currently houses another madman with an obsession with power. We'll have to wait and see if his fate will be the same. At number 7 is John D. Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller's record as the most productive person to ever live is 
evidence of his rise to global affluence in the middle of the 20th century. According to estimates, Rockefeller made more than $1.5 trillion over his lifetime. His projected net worth at the conclusion of his life was $400 billion, and how could it not be? For several decades, he monopolized 90% of the U.S. oil market with his Standard Oil. Between the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, Rockefeller knew how to spend his money, not only make it, unlike today's billionaires. His life was one of his first significant purchases. The fact that he paid to avoid being enlisted into the American Civil War most likely saved his life. He had the thought of paying former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill to write his biography in his senior years. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, but the concept was still brilliant. However, building all the family mansions, which today are nothing short of cultural landmarks, was undoubtedly one of John's largest outlays. In addition to being architectural marvels, they are also lavishly embellished with exquisite works of art by well-known painters. One of the first billionaires to develop a passion for automobiles was Rockefeller. John possessed one of the earliest cars ever made at a time when owning one was nothing short of a statement. Unfortunately, he unintentionally created a standard that demands that anyone with 10 figures in their bank account have a garage full of luxury vehicles. Thus, Rockefeller's passing from his realm wasn't all for the best. Number 6. Mansa Musa It sounds like the start of a really inappropriate joke to be wealthy and from Mali nowadays. The norms were a little different in the 14th century, though. Back then, colonialism hadn't ravaged Mali's resource-rich nation and Musa I, who ruled as emperor, who thought to have had a net worth of $415 billion as adjusted to current currency, and was the richest man on earth. Europe is among the worst places to live in 1312, the year Mansa Musa took the throne. The country was destroyed by famine, ongoing conflicts, and various epidemics. The Black Death was approaching and would soon obliterate the whole continent. Mali was at the top of the list of the African kingdoms that had the chance to emerge and prosper as a result. When he got in authority, Musa took over Timbuktu, which at the time rivaled Constantinople as the most significant trading hub in Africa. Musa rapidly became the richest man on earth thanks to the economic benefits of his conquests. He traveled to Mecca in 1324 with an enormous caravan that stretched as far as the eye could see as a display of his immense wealth. Musa, who didn't know how to travel on a tight budget, was hauling tons of gold on thousands of camels and horses, had tens of thousands of people in his retinue, and constructed mosques wherever he stopped so he could properly pray to Allah. He might have had a motive to express gratitude to his god on a personal level. Due to Musa's wasteful spending which caused high inflation to occur quickly and tax base to be unable to keep up with it, local economies everywhere he went were left in ruins. Making the inhabitants so wealthy that they can no longer be supported by the economy is how you ultimately destroy a nation. Let this be a lesson to the rest of the nations in the world. At number 5 is King Solomon. The names on the list before this Jewish king can be regarded as unfortunate hobos. According to the Bible, King Solomon was the world's richest king, and everyone is aware of the reliability of the Book of Books. The Old Testament claims that King Solomon got about 25 tons of gold per year for 39 years. That much would allow one to construct a palace entirely out of golden bricks without having to give them to anybody else. Think of them as somewhat more expensive Lego pieces. According to experts, Solomon's riches throughout his reign as a result of accumulated taxes and other income would be equivalent to almost $2.2 trillion in modern currency. We cannot, of course, expect to observe the monarch using his money to buy alcohol, and drugs, and women given the nature of the information source. However, according to the Bible, he only made morally upright purchases and even constructed the first Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Number 4. Augustus Caesar It may sound like Vladimir Putin will likely to declare himself the first emperor of the largest nation on earth any second, but he won't be the first to do so. Around 2,000 years ago, Augustus Caesar carried out the identical action and it unquestionably benefited him. Augustus made a simple political move that resulted in wealth, which in today's terms would be equivalent to $4.6 trillion. When you consider that Augustus personally held Egypt, which provided food for half of the empire, this absolutely unbelievable net worth seems a little far-fetched. Interestingly, Caesar had the option of sipping his coffee on the head of the Sphinx or within a pyramid if he so desired. In addition to controlling a whole nation, Julius, Augustus's uncle, also bequeathed him a legacy of at least 10 million gold coins. The estimated value of the 10 million gold coins in today's dollars is 200 billion, making them a respectable start in life. 
A large portion of his money was used for infrastructure. As Augustus merged his personal fortunes with the Roman empires, he used this money to construct roads, monuments, and temples. Moreover, the emperor funded chariot races, gladiator fights, and other sporting events which cost the people several million each year. He did, however, have a personal army of 250,000 troops which were perhaps his most valuable possessions. He lavishly paid them since they were crucial to his objectives to maintain the nation under his control. In modern currency, this would have cost Augustus close to a quarter of a billion dollars a year. After all, this extra coin is little compared to maintaining power, running the largest nation on earth and earning $4.6 trillion. At number 3 is Akbar I. Most people would likely confuse the Mughal Empire for a brand new virus that would put the entire planet under yet another lockdown if you asked them what it was. Yes, the former ruler of most of the Indian subcontinent as well as the region south and west of the Himalayas was an imperial power from the Far East, having had little influence on Western civilization while South Asia greatly benefited from it. Its significance is mostly attributable to Akbar I, who is thought to have once ruled over 25% of the global GDP. Naturally, this lessens the impact of a staggering wealth of $21 trillion. However, everybody can recognize what an absurd sum of money that is. If anyone would live a quiet and modest life if they had $21 trillion, Akbar had a different plan. Even by today's standards, he had a wealthy and opulent existence. In Delhi, Agra, and Fatapur, Akbar constructed three magnificent palaces for himself, which he lavishly embellished with so much gold that Donald Trump would have an aneurysm simply by gazing at them. Silk, marble, and a ton of artwork were used to embellish the interior as well. Akbar was a generous supporter of the arts, spending millions on a variety of paintings, books, music, and other works of art. He even attempted to combine Islam and Hinduism to form his own religion. While you might assume that this was an act motivated by his pride, it was actually a political strategy intended to unite a country that was brutally divided along religious lines. However, he failed, which was unfortunate for the area because India would pay a heavy price for many years to come. Number 2. Shen Song the benefits to becoming the Chinese emperor at one of the richest eras in the nation's history is surely staggering. From 1067 to 1085, Shen Song ruled China, bringing great success with him. The country experienced peace and economic progress as a result of new social policies that provided much-needed help to the poorest farmers. Over 30% of the world's GDP was reportedly under Shen Song's control at the time. The emperor was thought to have owned the equivalent of $30 trillion at the height of his power, according to experts. Of course, Shen Song lived opulently in palaces that remain important examples of architecture. Even still, the majority of his funds were spent on improving the lives of his subjects, and there aren't many records left to shed more light on his personal preferences. Now before we continue, who do you speculate is the wealthiest person owning the number one spot? Leave a guess in the comments below. Now here we are at number one, Genghis Khan. One may readily picture a well-educated visionary with access to authority and entrepreneurial spirits and a talent for trade and company growth while discussing the richest individual in history. Genghis Khan, however, was none of the above. The Mongol monarch did manage to amass wealth worth more than $100 trillion, despite the fact that he is best remembered for his horrific warfare, which brought destruction, mayhem, and massacres all the way to Europe. No one would advise learning business principles from this tyrant because he slaughtered about 10% of the world's population in just 20 years. Genghis Khan did, after all, develop the first bioweapon, so that qualifies as a form of inventive thinking? Yes, largely because of the strategies Genghis utilized to subdue the majority of the world. The bubonic plague once again annihilated the Earth two centuries from then. This time, it killed nearly 25% of everyone on Earth, and to conclude sarcastically, that is the best way to leave a legacy. Despite being born into servitude and having enormous wealth, Genghis Khan, also known as Temujin, shared it with his subjects. He did have a large number of women from whom he produced many children. Fortunately, he had enough money to cover all of his alimony with 100 trillion. Therefore, it would appear that all it takes to rank among the wealthiest individuals of all time is to dominate a nation with an iron hand, inject its economy with personal wealth, and treat your neighbors poorly. That makes me think of a certain international leader we have today. Hmm. What business lessons have you taken away from the top 10 richest people in history? 
Post your comments with your ideas, and if you enjoyed watching this video, please click the like button, consider subscribing, and press the notification bell for more updates. We appreciate your interest and hope to see you again soon.